there's this coincidence, a very large coincidence that you'll notice in the adult workforce, which is that people make exactly enough to live their lives comfortably. If you need $10,000 a year to live your life comfortably, that person will make somewhere between eight and 12000 And if somebody needs $100,000 a year to live uh, their comfortably, they'll make between 90000 and 110000 And they are both equally guilty of this coincidence, and they are both equally guilty of the sin of doing just enough to get by, which is what I want to talk about in this video. You know, I like the Wall Street series of movies, and I love Michael Douglas's character that he plays in these movies, and I like the Greed is Good speech. But the one thing I don't like is that while I agree with a lot of what's inside that Greed is Good speech, he actually becomes a greedy asshole in the movie and portrays all these negative characteristics of greed, which, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really like. Because again, I agree with a lot of the ideas in that Greed is Good speech about, about aspiring for more, trying to do more, and how greed can be good for a person. And I want to talk about that in this video. My mother always used to say, I've paid my dues. If I were showing her how to use the computer to file for something online and she didn't know how to use it, I would start teaching her how to use it and she'd go, I don't want to learn this stuff. I've paid my dues. I already learned. Anytime it came time to learn something or to, ha or to try something or to start a new job in a new field, she would manner off, I've paid my dues. I've done this already. I've learned this already. Blah, blah, blah. And this used to drive me out of my goddamn mind. because It was the idea that after a certain period of time in life, you don't have to learn anymore. And you know, there was a kid in my high school, 11th grade psychology class, who said something like this, I can't wait till I graduate, I'm done with learning, I'm tired with learning. And the teacher, George Anthony, who was a genius psychology teacher at uh, Susan Wagner High School, had a great rebuttal of this. He said, no, you're not tired of learning, never say that. You're not tired of learning. You're tired of me telling you when you can and can't go to the bathroom. You're tired of Regents examinations. You're tired of, of reading a book that you enjoy and then having to answer a bunch of questions that have nothing to do with the interesting part of the story. You're tired of waking up at 6 in the morning to get here. You're not tired of learning, you're just tired of all this other crap. You, you should never stop learning. There's no excuse to stop learning. And I agree with this very much. There really is no reason to stop learning. And I understand why a lot of people want to stop learning. At its basis core, learning requires that you be vulnerable because when you first start to learn something new and attempt to do it properly or attempt to understand it, you're probably going to fail. And failing puts you in a very vulnerable, vulnerable place and people don't like to fail. People don't like to feel ignorant. People don't like to feel stupid. People don't like to try to do something and fail at it. So what people will do is they'll remove themselves from situations where they are open to failure or open to being ignorant or seeming ignorant or not knowing things unless it's absolutely necessary. So what most people do is they'll go to school just long enough to get a job or they'll go to college just long enough to get a job or they'll listen to just the, exactly what they need to hear in job training to get to the point where they can get a job, where they can, you know, uh, pay for their apartment rent, pay for their kids to go to school, pay their car payments, and come home and have just a barely comfortable lifestyle. And this works for a lot of people. But the problem is that once they get to that comfortable point where they can pay their bills, and they can come home, and they don't have anything to worry about, they don't really keep learning. They don't keep pushing themselves, and they don't try for more. And what my mother used to say of people who did try for more, who did keep pushing themselves, is that they're just looking to keep up with the Joneses. They're, you know, that person's greedy. They're just looking to make as much money as possible. And I don't really agree with that. Because for me, when I try to aspire to do more, when I try to expand my business into a new territory, when I try a new idea out, it's not because I necessarily want to make more money. It's just the next natural step in my life to try to do something greater than what I'm doing right now. Money in the bank, that is not the reason to try something new. That's not the reason to learn something new. That's not the reason to implement something. Rather, that is a bonus of implementing something successfully. When I say, let me try out this new idea, and as a result of that new idea, I have 1000 or 5000 or $10,000 in the bank that wasn't there before I tried that idea, that's not the reason I did the idea. That's simply the world, the consumers out there, patting me on the back and saying, that's for a job well done. The money is, that's just the encouragement. That's just the, hey, you did a good job. That's not the reason that most people try to aspire to more, to build more. That's a natural part of um, being a human being. We don't just age while staying where we are and remain happy. You can't do that. Let's say this is aging and let's say this is progressing, learning. You're supposed to be doing something like this. You have to keep these two things in balance. You cannot say, I've gotten to this point, 
I'm going to stop learning, I'm going to stop aspiring for more, I'm going to stop doing more while aging. Because when you do that, you go out of balance. If you don't believe me, look at how many couples wind up cheating on each other, look at how many people have midlife crises, how many people get depressed, how many people leave good jobs where they make good money and wind up doing some silly stupid shit in their 30s or their 40s or their 50s. And now, with the term quarter life crisis becoming more common, as early as their mid-20s. It happens a lot because people are not meant to stay still. There is no such thing as staying still while aging. If you stay still while aging, you're falling behind. You're going backwards. You have to keep learning more. You have to keep doing more. You have to keep aspiring to accomplish more within your life. And it's not for the, just for money. It's for you. It's for you so that you can become a better person, so that you can remain happy. And that's what I try to do when I go about all these new business ideas. Life to me is a game, and I mean it's a play, I'm not going to stand still and pause it and you know, just stay there and not do anything. That's boring, and I don't understand how other people can manage to do that. So I don't want you to see, uh, you know, aspiring to do more and trying to do more is simply making more money. And as, like, that's the only reason. I don't want you to think, okay, I'm here now. I'm happy. You know what? You should always be happy for what you have. You should always appreciate what you have. You should always enjoy the fact that it's there. You can be happy with what you have while at the same time aspiring to do more, aspiring to do better. It's not like one or the other. Oh, you're not grateful for what you have. You're trying to do something else. That's not how it works. It's not one or the other. It's not, I appreciate what I have or I don't appreciate what I have and I'm going to try to do more. It's, I appreciate what I have and I appreciate where I am. Now, let me try to do better. Now, I want to talk about the second part of greed, which is um, something that is financially related. And it reminds me that end of, the, end of that movie, Schindler's List, where Liam Neeson playing Oscar Schindler is looking at the group of people that he saved. A short recap on the movie in case you haven't seen it because it is three hours and I don't expect you to watch it just because you saw this video. It's a movie about an industrialist who started this factory and he was employing Jewish workers during the Holocaust and he was also bribing SS officials and people in the German army to try to keep these people safe and keep them from going to concentration camps so that he could continue about his business and continue making a fuck ton of money. And, a and as he's making a fuck ton of money, he's noticing these atrocities that are going on around him and he decides, I, you know what, I, I, I can't watch this anymore. How can I save these people? And he has about 1,000 or 1,200 factory workers at the time. And there's a camp, Auschwitz, that uh, they're all supposed to be sent to, which they, they would be sent to to get executed. So what he does is he bribes the official a certain amount of money for each person that he's taking. So he's taking about 1,000 or 1,200 people with him. So he almost bankrupts himself and relieves himself of his personal fortune to take all of these Jewish workers with him to this new factory so that they don't wind up dying in the camp of Auschwitz. And when the German war ends, at the end of the movie, inst you know, they're all in front of him and he smiles for a minute, but then he becomes incredibly, incredibly sad because he's thinking to himself how if he had just made more money, he would have been able to save more people. He looks at his car and he says, this car, that could have bought me 10 people. You know, this ring, this could have bought me two people. And he looks, instead of thinking about how happy he should be, for all the people he was able to save as a result of the money he's made, he's thinking to himself about all the good that he could have done if he had made more money. Now, I'm not saying that the good that I do as a result of the money that I make is, you know, saving people from their death. I'm, I'm no Oscar Schindler, and you, most likely you won't be either. But my point is here, is that you will be faced with situations in your lifetime, in business and personal life, where doing the right thing, the, you know, the and thing, or the wrong thing may very well come down to how much money do you have? Do you have the money to do the right thing? There's a saying, and I, I wish I could coin the person who said it, it was something like, you know, being honest or doing the right thing is a, you know, is a luxury that most uh, honest men can, or most humble men can't afford. And the meaning is that a lot of the times doing the right thing costs such a high price that nobody can actually afford to do it. And that most people who try to be honest can't really put their money where their mouth is. So the idea that I'm getting across here is that if you see being greedy only as, or well, how much money do I have for myself? If you see bettering yourself as just a means to make more money, just so that you can have more personal wealth, and you write it off as, oh, I'm just happy being middle class. I'm just happy having just enough to feed myself and my family. I appreciate what I have. Think about all of the good things that you may be able to do over the course of your lifetime 
that you are not doing because you decided, I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to keep aging, but I'm going to stay exactly where I am in life and not do anything else. Because there are a lot of times where I've been able to do something that was the right thing because I had the money to do so. And there were also a lot of times where I really, really wanted to do what I saw to be the right thing, but I simply could not afford to.